Okay, so I guess I can actually talk about the game proper. This is the world map. You'll be able to access towns as well as dungeons as well as other citizens. I think that's what they call a game. They'll either give you useless information or plans. Yeah, just plans. Plans that we'll get more into later. And this is the items menu. I have nothing at the moment. Come poor. And the party for now is just Neptune and Compo. We're gonna get a crap ton more party members, trust me. More than you really need in any game, but whatever. Now each character has an ability, but it doesn't really kick in unless they're paired with someone. I'm not gonna show off what exactly happens, but it also depends on the relationship. So the Lily system, I think the game's gonna explain later. The Lily, the Lily, ah, the Lily system is more or less the affection towards the characters. So if it's, it's on a scale of zero to 10, so if it's zero, you're not gonna get any benefits. Typically, when you hit, I wanna say five, that's when you get all the benefits, but it can go up to 10. I think the only reason you would wanna do that is for an achievement. I'm honestly not sure because I haven't looked at the achievement system in over a year and I haven't had Wi-Fi and or internet for just as long. So, I couldn't tell you. I could probably put it in a note once I find out. Duke. Sure. Alright, and there's a lot of conversation between characters, especially in the beginning, but it's a lot better than the original. Okay, like, I guess I can go into that too. This is a remake of the very first game that was released back in, oh, what year was it? 2011? Where it was just nothing but conversations one after another. It could, I think the amount of dialogue, it was hours worth of it. And some of it was kind of useless, but all of it amounted to getting more party members added. If memory serves me right, it was the only way to get some of the extra party members that weren't the the three mandatory ones, Neptune and Kyle being two of them, and then there were, oh, how many? There was Red, Gus, 5BP, and who was the last one? Oh, her name does it. Yes, I cannot remember her name, but you just have to go through a lot of text boxes, events, and it would just be, it would literally be hours of nothing happening just to get them. and. They didn't really do much, not gonna lie. I felt they were kind of worthless, in my opinion. The game as a whole is kind of... I liked it at first, but then after I played... Uh... Well, what's funny is, my history with this series is I started off with the third game. And then I went back to the first one, I was just like, eh. And I played the second one, it was just like, damn. It sucks. So, after a while, they actually remade the first two, and I guess they remade the third one, but the remakes are based off of the third one's mechanics, which is good, because, <laughs> oh, the first one is very, I wouldn't say bad, okay, yeah, I'm actually gonna say bad, I really don't like it anymore at all, I could tolerate it before, but now it's just, uh, after playing this, I never want to touch it, I might show it off years from now. When I'm bored. No, I won't. But when you access a town, you have a few options, such as the shop, the guild, which I think we'll see later. No, we won't see that later. We'll see that next part. Whoops. And you can talk to other citizens as well. But for now, we're gonna get introduced to our first dungeon. And yeah, this, there's gonna be a lot of chatter for the first few parts. And also, I don't know if Audacity works when I'm recording at the same time, so this is post commentary for now. I might switch to live later. I'm gonna eventually test that, but I'm also lazy. Sorry, not sorry. Another thing this franchise likes to do, which I actually enjoy, it likes to make references to other games. Like, um, what's the Dagoos? What are they a reference to? They're a reference to, I believe, Dragon Quest, I think, because they're named Dugus, I want to say, or Metal Jellies or something like that. They're essentially a reference to that. They look exactly like them, except they're 
Doge. The battle system is... The fight gonna start now? Or do I have to take 10 unnecessary steps for the event to start? I wanna say... It is the latter. If memory serves me right. I have my trusty sword, but it skills with me, it'll be a piece of cake. I kind of like that. And Neptune has a habit of breaking the fourth wall. Other characters do it as well, but that's, I guess, her unique trait for third characteristic, among other things. But she, she's a bit of an airhead. Main character, her personality changes completely when she's in a different form, which we'll see later. And as for Compass, she's the one that found Neptune. In case they weren't reading and just listening to me talking, I'm gonna explain this. She's the one that found Neptune. She's a nurse in training, and now she's along with us for our journey. She is a temporary mage for now, but later on down the road, it's gonna get to the point to where I do not use her at all. I'll have her teamed up with my characters, but I won't actually have her fight. So in dungeons, you can find harvest points, save points, and treasure boxes. Now the harvest points, you're going to want to go after all of them, trust me, you'll need them because there's a lot of crafting involved in this game and uh, it's a good thing in that it makes replayability fun, but at the same time, there's just some items I don't give a damn about and I probably won't make the, I'm going to say it's the accessories that I'm not going to go after. It's one where it's just hundreds and hundreds of unnecessary items I'm not even going to bother with. And so... What am I doing? Oh, right. Uh, you can customize your character's actions. And they have three different categories of actions they can use. Rush, Power, and Break. We're going to see it a little bit. But, unfortunately, I just rely on Power for them the meantime because the enemies they're not really threatening so there's really no strategy just smack them to the dead really doggies and yeah, they are kind of cute they like shaving each other are we fighting no we're not uh, I guess I can start explaining because I think I'm just gonna breeze through the battle but whenever it's one of your characters turns, you can freely move around a set space. I think that's determined by one of their stats. It is, I just can't remember it. I think it's called movement, duh. And there will be a blue indicator right in front of the character. If an enemy is inside that indicator, you can interact with them by attacking them. They'll initiate by starting with a basic attack. Ooh, excuse me. And then you can combo into Rush, power, or break moves. As we'll see right here. Wow. Compa is faster than Neptune. See, I attack once and I can go into a combo. I go to either power or break for combo. See, it was that easy. There was no strategy to that. But you'll want to mix it up for the later enemies so that you can exploit their weaknesses as well as their traits because which, with each enemy, they have two uh, gauges. A health gauge and a guard gauge. The guard gauge, they give it as a shield that mitigates some of the damage. And once the gauge is empty, they'll take more damage. Now the thing with that is, it all depends on their stats. Like some enemies, they have so little health that that'll actually deplete before you even break the guard gauge. And some enemies will take little to no damage until you break the guard gauge. So you'll just have to pay attention to what each enemy is like and then just go from there and then with the power commands well okay so you want to use the break commands obviously to do the most break damage that's not the case with every character but for the most part yes their break attacks will do the most guard damage power self-explanatory they those moves hit the hardest and then rush will actually be used to 
build a, another gauge that I don't think we'll even get to see in this part. But I do use that a lot, just not early on. There's no point because I don't even have access to the gauge. And so while you're on the field, you can move around freely and you can actually see the enemies. That's another difference. There were, you couldn't, was it? Wait, hold on. I gotta think, gotta think, gotta think. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Okay, okay, all right. I remember now. <laughs> Bye, because I haven't played the, the original in a minute, but you couldn't see the enemies at all in the original game, it would just be random encounters. Here, it's kind of like random encounters, but you can actually see the encounters. So you can avoid them if you want, or initiate the attack. Now, if you attack them on the field, you um, you get to move first regardless of your speed. The same applies to the enemies. If they, oh, I guard break. Huh. If the enemies get you first, then they get to attack first when the battle starts. So you'll always wanna try to initiate the attack first. If you just run into them without attacking, then the order of turns is determined by everyone's speed. What am I doing? Oh right, you can also arrange where your party is positioned. And right now I have two. But you can have up to three party members on the field, which throws me off every time I come back to this game, because Every game after this, you can have up to four. I'm pretty sure they did this because in the original you can only have three, but I, I, I miss four. <laughs> I really do. We can make game industry peaceful again. Yeah. So every time you defeat an enemy, you get experience and credits, obviously, which is the money in this game. But they do have a chance of dropping an item. Which is why, is usually why I try to go out of my way to fight everything because again, you're going to be crafting a lot in this game. You won't be able to craft everything on your first playthrough though, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> but you can plan it out if you've already played through the game. It's just, trust me, you're going to have to play through the game more than once to get everything. So... With the encounters, how I'm gonna handle it. If it's something new, I'll show it. If it isn't, or if I level up, I'll show that as well. If it's something we've seen, I'm just gonna cut it out. There's no point in seeing it again, especially if nothing really happens. Ow. So we see regular Nugus, Tulips, and Dugu Man. Dugu Man, they're just buffed up Dugus. The Tulips, I really couldn't tell you what we do because they die so easy. Okay, it was the movement stat. That's what I was thinking of. Let's see, I think I'm gonna cut this out. Yep, nothing value happened. So I cut it out. I think the next few are gonna be cut out. Let me look at it. The timeline. Yep. I remember we get all the treasure because the, the items can shift around once you revisit. It won't show up on the map the first time through, once you get them all and then revisit it, it will show up. And also there's a hidden one in each dungeon, you just use the... Uh, I think it's X or Y. It'll send off a radar and once you the radar touches the item, it will be revealed and you can pick it up. That used to be a dungeon skill, I believe, in the first one, the original, for IF, and Gust, but now anyone can do it. There were other, like, dungeon abilities as well, but here this is completely, it's non-existent. So anyway, Boxer X is dead, but I think he, out of all the enemies in this dungeon, he's the one that hits the hardest, so. Just be mindful of that when you're fighting. You're dead. And that was a save point, just it's really easy to save. Just press X or in my case that A. Lucky. Get the buttons fixed up between controllers. Yes, A. Press A. Press A again. You're done saving. You can only see the save points, but if you're on the map, 
You can save it any time by opening up the menu. We're here! This is where I found you, Nep Nep. Wow, that's a huge hole right there. Nep Nep, does this make you remember anything? Um, Nep Nep? a shooting star and landed right here. Like a shooting star cutting through the night, right? That's right! What's the matter, Kampa? Why'd you raise your voice? Just struck me, but there could be a clue around here somewhere. Nepnep, -nep, did you lose anything by chance? Maybe an idea or anything? I wish, but, you know, I can't remember anything, so... Hey, wait! I, I do remember something I'm missing! Really? What is it? Well, that's obvious. Obvious? My memory. Um, wasn't that funny? Nep Nep, I don't think now is the time to be fooling around. Wait, what? I thought you were joking when you asked me if I remembered. Joking aside, let's look for some clues. What's that sound? I have a bad feeling about this. What? The ground! It's crumbling! We're Ouch! I didn't expect that. They really changed the story with this remake. Wait a minute. Where's Kampa? Kampa! Where are you? Are you alright? Yes, see. I think I'm okay. Phew. It would have been a disaster if you lost your memory, too. Where are we, anyway? I think we're beneath the forest. This place feels a bit weird. Yeah, I'm getting bad vibes from this place. What's this? Kampa, can you take a look? Do you know what it is? I don't know. I've never seen something like this before. I know! It must be a metal to change into items with a king somewhere! What? Where's that event flag-inducing growl coming from? Nap Nap! There's a huge monster over there! Ah! Please help me! Oh no! Kompa! She's being censored and... Censored! I'm not being censored! I'm just off screen, Nep Nep! Oh, you know fan service. Well, time to get a bit more serious now. Don't worry, I'll save you. Take this! Wait, who just commented on my attack? I'm sorry. I didn't want to surprise you, but I couldn't stop myself. Hmm? I've heard that voice before. Have we met? I am Histoire. I thought I explained this when I was in your dream, Neptune. Oh yeah! Ms. Heavenly Voice from my dream! Wait, that was real? Um, Nep Nep, 
A little help here, pretty please. Oh, right! I need to help Kampa! Miss Heavenly Voice, can you help? No, but if you use your hard drive divinity, things should be okay. Hard drive what? I lost my memory, so do you mind taking it step by step? I see. That explains why the conversation was all over the last time. Um, if I use that hard drive thingy, I can save Kappa, right? Well, yes. But now, I'm not sure you can use your hard drive divinity. Well, I'll go beyond the impossible and kick reason to the curb! So, please, lend me a hand. I want to save my friend, Kampa. I will force run hard drive divinity from you. Are you ready? Ready and willing! Neptune. May your power arise! You're going! Is this really me? Yes, this is your true form, Neptune. Nap nap! Wow, you transformed! The power, it's flowing from within. There's no way I can lose with this. Just wait, Kampa. I'll save you. I'll be your opponent. Okay, so characters like Neptune can transform. They get a massive stat boost, and that's more or less it. Depending on the character, though, some moves will change entirely as well. But for Neptune, her moves stay the same. They just get an added power boost. To take me on. Cross combo. And each character has a special, well, a set of special skills. Neptune. I won't lose here. That was just Neptune break. Memory increase. Oh, that's for crafting. Uh, I'll get into that later.
Okay, oh, as I was trying to explain before, I got cut off. Yes. When you want to transform, you need at least 20% of your SP gauge in the meter. If you, if you don't have that, then the tough luck. But yes, Neptune as well as two, three, four, five other characters can transform. Well, wait. Yes, I can map. Without the DLC, only four characters can transform, including Neptune. With the DLC, six. I'll show off the DLC. Uh, it'll be soon. But yes, when they transform, they get a power boost, and depending on the character, some moves change completely. With Neptune, it's just strictly a power boost. And Neptune as a character as a whole, she's... I would say the most balanced is just that she doesn't really have anything unique. She's just a straightforward uh, character that hits until the enemy's dead, more or less. She has a couple moves that can boost this task of herself and others later on down the road, but other than that, I, I like her, it's just she's not really quote unquote special, aside from being the main character. But well, I wouldn't say that. She does have access to more EXE drive move thing about what's it's later on down the road the line, but we'll get into that later. Compa um, She's there. Like I said earlier, after a while, I was gonna get to a point where I don't really use her. I'm gonna try to use her, just so people don't forget her, but other than that, I don't really care for her. It's just gonna be other characters that can do what she does, but better, honestly. And I'll have access to items that can do what she does. It's just more convenient that way. But for now, she'll do. She's also very frail. I mean, considering that she's the healer, it makes sense, but damn, jeez, <laughs> she sucks. I don't, <laughs> I really don't like using her at all. Uh, the second I can replace her, it's, it's gonna be like that. <laughs> oh, right, the memory increase. The memory increase is solely for the remake system so whenever you craft something it'll use up a certain amount of memory and you can only get so much memory in one playthrough which means you're gonna have to play through the game again now oh there's a remake system now what i mean by remake is that you can well add stuff to the game like they did for this remake Duh. But you can get new dungeons this way, you can get more weapons this way, you can even get new mechanics to the game itself, such as 100% escape from any battle you want. Uh, what's another one? Increased money and experience after every battle. And there's even one that can strengthen and or weaken enemies that you come across. And you can get plans from either residents treasures in the, the cave or monsters and even quest rewards we get into the quest rewards uh, let me look at the timeline next part yes so like right now there'll be citizens across the map and they'll occasionally give you plans i think all these are just this manual explaining how to play if so i don't really care it has to be but yeah, every time I go to the map, you're gonna see me just kind of float around, make sure I don't miss anything. But don't fret if you don't get to make everything with the remake system in one playthrough, because as I said earlier, it's actually impossible to make everything your first time through. It's gonna take, hmm, I would say, for me, it usually takes three cycles. There might be people who do it in two. But if you want to make every single thing, it's going to take three cycles. With this playthrough, we'll prob I'll probably only go through the game twice. And there I go. I just made a couple of healing items, and then they'll be available in this shop for me to purchase later on. And, no, that's, that's about it. In the next part, we're going to... What are we doing? I got that quick. Oh, yes, we're going to go visit Planet 2 to activate another dungeon. And... Learn what the guild is about. Thank you for watching it, and I will see you then. Take care, y'all.